Hi, my name is Dr. Arnold and I'm a dentist in Preston, Lancashire. And in this video, I wanna talk about the history of NHS dentistry, how it started and how things have progressed since it was started. So let's start in 1948, the 5th of July, 1948, the NHS was born. And this stands for National Health Service, the NHS um, in the UK. And that meant that healthcare was free at the point of need. So you didn't have to be wealthy. You didn't have to have um, money to pay for medical care. When you turned up, you were able to be treated for free. Now, one of the things that highlighted how bad the nation's teeth was came down to the Boer War. Now, 208,000 people were admitted for hospital care and about 7,000 of those, it was dentally related. So they were having um, dental issues, um, which meant that they were struggling to function as, as soldiers. And out of that 7,000, a third were actually deemed unfit to serve uh, because of these dental issues. Um, so the nation's teeth was really in a bad place. Now, one of the stats that highlighted how bad things were um, in 1948, over three quarters of the population over the age of 18 had complete dentures. They had false teeth. They had no teeth of their own. It was the norm. And that's very different to nowadays where having dentures is not actually the norm. In 1949, 94% of dentists had signed up to provide NHS services. So the majority of dentists were providing NHS care, uh, very different to today. So huge was the pent up demand that more than 70% of adults were edentulous. So more than 70% of adults um, had no teeth and 80% of 12 year olds had significant decay. So in terms of children, it was very common that they had tooth decay. Um, and this meant that in its first year, dentistry under the NHS outspent GP services. Government thought that NHS dentistry, you know, so much would go towards the NHS dentistry, but the demand was just so huge that the budget um, was blown out the water and just dentistry was in demand. Normally dentists were seeing between 15 to 20 patients a day. And when NHS dentistry became available, um, dentists were now regularly seeing over a hundred patients a day. I can't imagine how that looks, seeing over a hundred patients a day. Um, that must have been a huge stress <laughs> on dentists. And I just can't imagine seeing a hundred patients um, in a single day. And really what was making um, this financial uh, pressure heavy for government was the fact that Number one, they had a budget that they, they thought dentistry would fit within. And they didn't think that dent, there would be such a need for dentures, um, but that was um, the opposite. There was a real demand for dentures. Um, and the hope was that the NHS dental services would be more focused on children um, and conservative treatment for children. Um, there's a stat again that says that in the first nine months of its existence, NHS dentists provided over 33 million artificial teeth, a figure that would rise to 65.5 million for the year 1950 to 1951. So that's within three years, the demand for dentures has been going up and up. Now that dentistry was free, you didn't have to pay for dentistry. Um, a lot of people were coming, a lot of people were being seen, and because dentists were so busy, I mean, you talk about that stat that said that dentists were now seeing from 15 to 20 patients to 100 patients. It meant that um, dentists had a lot more activity and the government were, was now paying dentists a lot more um, because it was directly correlated to their activity. So by 1951, it looked like the NHS was struggling for finances to sustain the care it was providing to the nation. And the first charge of its kind for dentistry was introduced in 1951. So the first charge that came in was introduced for dentures alone, and it was one pound. So now 
when people needed dentures, they had to contribute one pound towards um, the cost of the dentist producing dentures for them. The following year, um, other treatment was now also added where patients would have to pay a certain amount towards their dental care and the government NHS was um, paying the rest that would be needed to actually uh, have this service available. By 1976, um, the price for dentures had risen. It was now £3.50 and you track it all the way up to now. Um, the prices and costs of treatment for NHS dentistry has gone up to the point that now, uh, you know, there's the three bands um, that your treatment will fall under when you're being treated under the NHS. Uh, the checkup being around 22 pounds, roughly around there, um, about 60 pounds for band two treatments, which include fillings um, and teeth being taken out extractions. And then the band three charge, which is about 270 pounds or more, um, around about that figure for things like bridges, dental bridges or dental um, or dentures. Um, so from dentures being completely free to now being one pound to being three pounds 50 to now being around 280 pounds, 270 to 280 pounds for dentures. You can see how um, progressively um, the contribution that the public has to make towards the NHS dental care has gone up. Um, because the government is finding out the budget is just not there to contribute towards dentistry. Um, and that's caused a big debate uh, whether there should be more funds made available to provide NHS dental care um, or whether really the provision of dental care under the NHS should just be kept to emergency treatment um, and other treatments not be covered under the NHS. It's a very big debate. Um, but hopefully this gives you a little short snap insight into the history of NHS dental care. I'll see you guys at the next video.